تو الحمد لله على كل حال ان شاء الله الله سبحانه وتعالى تقدير و ايه بس تقدير baru i think this is me lah mashallah because on my way here i was thinking cuz i need today i didn't wear laptop so i brought my phone aje you know, my phone has the recording device kan inside and i bring a mic lah uh, so it's clear the recording and then uh, when i was thinking let's walk out of my house with a phone no carry anything now i was thinking down ni lah tak cakap tak cakap mashallah subhanallah eh <laughs> so i was thinking so easy at energy eh so easy <laughs> this i don't have to carry anything with me <laughs> kan pasal <laughs> thing this kind of thing masih masih subhanallah the moment you tell subhanallah dan juga alhamdulillah masyaallah Allah tarik <laughs> Allah tarik dan Allah <laughs> should have you should have you know <laughs> but taking things for granted for granted masyaallah <laughs> ya Allah remind us God things macam you know, Allah reminds us you know Allah reminds us it at the story about the sheikh and surah fatiha kan Allah reminds you tarik aja Uh, yes, it's so easy, eh? So easy, eh? <laughs> tak payah pun buat buku. Tak payah pun. <laughs> then to bring a book, then to bring it. And then Allah tarik. <laughs> Allah just take it away for a while. You know, MashaAllah. Then one of my students also shared with me that there was a, uh, an ustaz lah who hafal, who hafal Quran for years. Hafal Quran. And then um, one Ramadan, he, for his first Ramadan that he led, uh, that he led the uh, blue light. <laughs> that he led the tarawih. And he read one juz a night lah, you know, khatam the Quran. And then so, um, and he didn't even, you know, have to, he didn't make a single mistake the entire month of reciting the uh, Quran. And then, mashallah, similar, similar story lah, that on the last night of Ramadan, he came out and he was doing the tarawih again. And then like towards the end, as he was finishing juz amma, coming to the end of the Quran, it just came to his heart lah. Like, you know, uh, 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 you know, <laughs> you did a whole month, you know, uh, one juz a night, not a single mistake this year. Not a single mistake you know, from, from start to end. Then he sampai surah Nas, he forgot surah Nas. <laughs> so Nas gone from his head. Then no panic, <laughs> panic. Kul, kul, <laughs> kul. <laughs> Uh, the people had to prompt him <laughs> for Surah Nas. <laughs> ya Allah, it's so slight tau. The, the, the thought just, just occurred. To, I just remember myself, I was walking out, it just, just occurred to me. So slight the thought. <laughs> And then tarik. <laughs> uh, where is your God? Where is your God? <laughs> Let's say, MashaAllah, this SubhanAllah. Can I have like a fleeting thought? <laughs> You know, but it's all Allah's mercy and His guidance and His um and His His rahmat lah that He that He makes us you know on our put us on our toes. <laughs> you know, make sure you're grateful for this. Okay, don't ever think <laughs> you know. Inshallah, you know. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, oh, Inshallah. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Allahumma salli ala sidina wa hamid. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه في كل لحظه ابدا على نعم الله وافضاله اللهم اتنا من لدنك رحمه وعلمنا من لدنك علما سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم بسم الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نوينا تعلم وتعليم وتذكر وتذكير نفع وانتفاع والإفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الهدى ودلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله مرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع لطف وعافية برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إن لسدك العلم لدني مشرب الصافي الهاني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم إن نسألك العلم لدني مشرب الصافي الهاني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم إن نسألك العلم لدني والمشرب الصافي الهاني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم ألهمنا علما نفقه به أوامرك ونواهيك وارزقنا فهما نعرف به كيف نناجيك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسألك فهم النبي وحفظ المرسلين وإلهام الملائكة المقربين في عافية يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أغننا بالعلم وزينا بالحلم 
وأكرمنا بالتقوى وجملنا بالعافية يا أرحم الراحمين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم إن نستودعك ما قرأناه وما نقرأه في هذا المجلس وما قبله وما بعده فاحفظه علينا حتى ترده إلينا وقت احتياجنا إليه يا رحم الرحيم اللهم يا معلم إبراهيم علمنا ويا مفهم سليمان فهمنا ويا مؤتي داود الحكمة آتنا الحكمة وأصلحنا اللهم أكرمنا بنور الفهم وأخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وافتح لنا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا حكمتك يا أرحم الراحمين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم يا من مقاليد الأمور كلها بيده وإليه يرجع الأمر كله يا فتاح يا عليم يا فتاح يا عليم يا فتاح يا عليم افتح علينا فتحا قريبا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وسدد لساني وهدي قلبي وفعل كذلك بأحبابي أبدا وارزقنا كمال فتوح العارفين والفقه في الدين مع كمال الإخلاص والصدق واليقين والعافية والغنى والنصر والحفظ ونفع والانتفاع وخيرات الدارين وعلوم الأولين والآخرين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم ونجي يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله كنتني بوليسنس ما شاء الله Praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for always bringing us to his book and, and the more we praise him, the more we hope from him that he subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep us constant and consistent um, on studying his book, on, on reading his book, on taking lessons from the stories in his book subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and, the, and the messages from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine words. Alhamdulillah. And we are continuing in our story in Surah Yusuf, right? In, in the story of Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam. Um, and we have reached the part about the king, right? And where the king uh, tells about his dream. And then last week we spoke about Nabi Yusuf's interpretation of the dream, right? By the king, right? So uh, the, 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 the dream of the king. Right, so today I'm just going to go and recite um, the part about the king calling for Nabi Yusuf, where, where, right there, right? where the king calls for Nabi Yusuf, and Nabi Yusuf says, you know, he points to the woman, and he says, go and you know, uh, check that issue first, <laughs> right, before I come out of this jail, I am, uh, you go and uh, look into the issue of the woman. And Nabi Yusuf at this point, he didn't even, he didn't even say anything bad about them. He just says, he just says you know, go and you know, do some investigation. You know about these women, you know, who cut their fingers, who look into the matter, right? And he, and he, mashallah, Nabi Yusuf, alayhi salam, with the wisdom that Allah has given Nabi Yusuf, um, and, and the, the deep knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given Nabi Yusuf, in that he had a foresight, that he knew, you know, being in, you know, having, having a record of being in jail, right, would prevent him in the future right, from taking the position, you know, as a minister of finance, right? So, and he saw himself to be fit. For the position, why? First and foremost, of course, his qualifications. You know, he is truthful. He is knowledgeable. He is trustworthy. At the same time, what is at stake? Uh, what is at stake is serious. <laughs> it is people's livelihood and people's life itself altogether. For fourteen years, there are going to be seven years of drought. 
right? that it's a serious situation and only those who are responsible right, can be placed in charge. Right? So he saw the seriousness of the situation and the views of Allah, he said, so he saw that he, he, if you want to get, get, a do, get a job well done, you can do it yourself. Right? <laughs> so, so he put himself in position. He wants to put himself in position. The views of Allah, he said, right? so therefore, he, um, he has to clear his name. I mean, see, he, he's his foresight. Watch Allah. So, so far in, in sight. And you would, like for us, if you're in jail and the king calls you out, you just close out here. <laughs> right? I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't you know, uh, think to, you know, uh, to ask for anything. And the thing about it is that you might ask the question, why didn't he just go out of the jail and then, you know, get his position with the king and then ask for, you know, some form of investigation? Right? Because if he did that, if he went out first and the king liked him, you know, and had some you know, favor towards him. Now you can see where he's going, right? If he were to ask for investigation, very quickly the people would say, oh, <laughs> it's because the king likes him. Right? So therefore, his name is cleared because the king likes him. Right? So instead of it being really pure innocence, it becomes, oh, the favor of the king. Uh, he got into the, you know, the inner circles of the king and he got favors from the king. He's such an ex-convict and because the king likes him, the king cleared his name. Uh, so he could even go in, in, in that sense. So to the only the the only time whereby he can actually do this uh, clean in a, in a clean cut is when he's still in jail and the king has not met him yet. Right. So then, if they do you know a, a taftish, meaning a, an investigation, right? Then then only people will say okay, fair investigation, uh, because he has no position with the king yet. <laughs> he's gonna have position in the, inshallah soon. Okay, let me just um, recite. We're on verse number five. Yeah, I put in the in the speaker the wrong. I always put the wrong number there. Okay, so Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "A'udhu billahi min al-shaytani rajim Wa qala al-malik tuni bih. Falamma jaahu al-rasul qala rji' ila rabbika. فَاسْأَلْهُمَا بَالُ النِّسْوَةِ اللَّاتِ قَطَّعْنَ أَيْدِيَهُنَّ إِنَّ رَبِّي بِكَيْدِهِنَّ عَلِيمٌ قَالَ مَا خَطْبُكُنَّ إِذْ رَاوَتْتُنَّ يُوسُفَ عَنْ نَفْسِهِ قُلْنَ حَاشَ لِلَّهِ مَا عَلِمْنَا عَلَيْهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ مِنْ سُوءٍ قالت امرأة العزيز ال... قال... قالت امرأة العزيز الآن حص الحق أنا راودته عن نفسه وإنه لمن الصادقين ذلك ليعلم أني لم أخنه بالغيب وأن Allah <laughs> قال الملك اتوني به استخلصه لنفسي فلما كلمه قال انك اليوم لدينا مكين لدينا مكين امين قال اجعلني على خزائن الارض اني حفيظ عليم صدق الله العلي العظيم وقد بلغ نبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين وشاكرين وذاكرين والمؤمنين يوم القيامة إن شاء ويكون لنا حجة يوم القيامة وليس علينا اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الله سبحانه وتعالى has indeed spoken the truth and our prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has indeed conveyed the message and he has fulfilled the responsibility that was placed on him and we are on all of this as witnesses and as those who are grateful and those who remember and those who are believers and insha'Allah من المطيعين and of those who are obedient to what we hear المعتبرين those who take lessons from the words of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and hope and prayer that Allah سبحانه وتعالى makes this this approve for us on the day of judgment and not against us. 
Right, so the king says, وَقَالَ الْمَلِكُ أُتُونِي بِهِ right, And the king said, bring him to me. فَلَمَّا جَاءَهُ الرَّسُولُ قَالَ رُجِعْ إِلَى رَبِّكَ right, So when the, when the messenger of the king came to Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam, he said, go back. I go back to your Rob, to your Lord. I meaning the king. I go back to the king. I go back to the king and ask him, فَاسْأَلْهُ مَا بَالُ النِّسُ وَتِلَّاتِ قَطَّعْنَ أَيْدِيَهُنَّ إِنَّ رَبِّي بِكَيْدِهِنَّ عَلِيمٌ right, So go and ask him. So Nabi Yusuf, he refused to come because now he knows his, his desire. <laughs> He's being sought by the king. He, is, he, has, he has a skill that nobody else has. He has ilm, he has knowledge that nobody else has. Right, so he's, uh, he's basically um, going to make some requests uh, before he, uh, he, he, he will, before he will do as the king says. He's going to make some requests because now he is sought after. <laughs> you know, mashallah. Right, so he holds his position in, in prison and he says, I'm not going to come out until you clear my name. I go and clear my name first. And it's not so much that he had any care for his name to be cleared, right? but it was more of Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam, it was more of what he saw in the future. And more than that, more important than that, right, is that he's, he's a prophet and he's going to be doing da'wah. Right? So you can't possibly be doing da'wah you know, if you have this, you know, this, this track record. You know, of, even, even if someone had repented and all that, being a prophet is different. You know, being a prophet, you can't have in your records as a prophet, eh, you, know, you can't have in your records that, you know, you try to seduce a woman. <laughs> it cannot happen, subhanAllah. And even we know that, we, even we know that, you know, while Allah accepts repentance, we know it does, it does affect followers or students if they know that a particular religious, you know, personality has some things in the closet. Uh, so when it comes to air, you know, when it comes to air, and even if they have already repented from it, and that is in them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they have repented from it, alhamdulillah if they have. But as students and followers, you can't follow them anymore. And it says you, you can't bring, so that's, it's hard for people to bring themselves to do it. Right? So if let's say, like, for example, if, if let's say like, a, a religious preacher right, was known to flirt with, with his female students, Straight away, you're uh, not going to learn from him anymore. <laughs> Straight away, you, 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 you don't like it, lah. Uh, you don't like it, and, and then no matter no matter what he says of truth and how attractive the classes and whatsoever, once that became air, <laughs> the the off, eh? <laughs> you're already off. You know, you did that put off by by that kind of behavior. You know, even if he has repented and everything, Allah has accepted his repentance. It's just it it is a position, and it's an amana there also, and there is a responsibility there. Right. So prophets, of course, prophets are ma'asum. Prophets are, they are, um, they are infallible. They're not, they're not able to commit sins as how normal human beings commit sins. So, of course, prophets are far from it. Right? But uh, on top of that, it is the responsibility of those who carry the religion, those who preach the religion. They're not prophets, yes, they're not prophets. Right? But not for them to go around airing things. Uh, that, one, that one is I. And call it ain, and that one is a flaw. You're not to go around airing, right? because it's, there is a religious responsibility right, that is on them, and the people around them in their homes, in their houses, right, they are not to also air things, right? because it undermines the religion. It affects the religion. You know, as much as we don't like that it happens, happens. Right? So, as far as possible, it is the it is a protection of the good name of Islam. You know, in that way. Because there are people who, inshallah, they do whatever they want, they want to do. And sometimes people think, you know, they should just go around and just, you know, say things about themselves or say things about other people. And what they end up doing is they end up hurting those who are trying to learn the religion. Because now they're like, this person did this, this person did that, and I have no teacher. <laughs> and every teacher is a crook, or every teacher is perverted, or every teacher is, you know, it becomes you know, uh, traumatizing on those who are coming into the religion. And, and they, 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 they're, they're taking baby steps trying to come in. You actually, you actually um, spoil it for them or you undermine it for them and then they get hurt and, they, they don't, and they don't know where to go. And some of them, and we know these are like, true cases, they, 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 they end up just leaving the entire thing. I say that it's just, you know, they're, they're all the same, they're all the same, you know, subhanAllah. And I know, I know of, of several cases, you know, of, uh, of, of, of female uh, preachers, you know, teachers of the religion 
that you know that someone just come into the class you know she's just beginning to start to pray just begin to cover up pretty girl and the ustad begins to uh, flirt the ustad begins to text begins to and then you, you know, subhanallah the amana all crushed <laughs> you know and and you spoil it for them you know subhanallah which is why you know in our religion it's always best female with female male with male right and then so at least you, you don't get exposed right to that and, and also you know as my teacher will always say to us um my, my, my in in tarim she will, she will always say to us you know men are men <laughs> Right. Even if they are the biggest sheikh, biggest habib, biggest you know ustad, because of course you maintain a good opinion of them, but men are men. Right? Do not have one-on-one messages with them. Uh, but be very careful. You're a woman, okay? Uh, don't have one-on-one SMSing right, with them. Don't think just because ustad uh, that you can do all these things. Uh, don't 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 think that. You know, and I have, I have friends who have fallen into it, and and they're shocked. Right, when they get these kind of messages, um, not, they didn't fall into it, right, but they, they, were, um, they never thought they would get uh, messages that were uh, inappropriate from ustads that they really look up to yeah, and, and, and married. <laughs> and then they get messages and they're unmarried uh, women. So never, 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 think, never think for a moment. These are not prophets. Eh? They're not prophets. <laughs> okay? They're ustads. Right? They're human beings. Uh, with nafs. Okay, so, uh, so always the sharia is always up. Uh, the sharia is always the rule of the day. Lah. <laughs> the sharia prevents one-on-one. The sharia prevents um, any form of talk beyond work. Uh, the sharia puts a lot of walls around us. But it's just that we tend to, you know, ignore the walls. The sharia has peace. But anyway, going back to this. Uh, so you see how Nabi Yusuf is very careful. Right? Because he is, he realizes that he, he's going to begin to preach as well. So more important than his financial role right, is his spiritual role as a prophet. These are people who are deep in shirk. And Nabi Yusuf in his position will begin to do da'wah to them. Because he's a prophet, wajib. Right? Wajib want him to do da'wah. So he needs to, to, to make it clear Right, that he never flirted with any of these women. Right, it was them right, who tried to get to him. I wonder how difficult for prophets. Because eh? it is known that all prophets are the most handsome of their time. Eh? So I wonder like, how, how it is for prophets you know, going around doing da'wah and all these women are crazy over them. <laughs> okay, which Yeah, I'm not so sure about that because I know from my from from the Hadramaut yeah, tradition, yeah, yeah. Habib is specifically from the family of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah, and they will call you if they are not from the family, yeah. and you call them Habib. Yeah. They will just call you. <laughs> yeah. It has to be of prophetic descent. Uh, specifically the prophet uh, so even like, like much of normal Arabs can cannot has to be they must know their lineage to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yeah. Yeah, so it's very strict because even my own teachers much um, Ustazah Zainab my teacher I call her Ustaza because she is from the lineage of the Ansar people of Medina not Rasulullah's lineage but, but, but Arab Arab lah and if some, when she came to Singapore they were like calling her Hababa Hababa and she was like I don't tell them don't call me Hababa I'm not Ahl Bayt I'm not Ahl Bayt <laughs> They can't call me that. <laughs> uh, it's true, it's true. It is, you're not supposed to be called... The, the term Habib is, is specifically for the family. Specifically for the family. Yeah. Mm. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. It's scary. It's scary because and, they, yeah, they and, deceive. Yeah, and there are ustazah, ustazah who actually go to his museum and things like that. And I was 
I know, I know. I, um, there was once where I was, I was brought, and then um, there was a, there was a real habib with us. <laughs> and there was a real habib with us, Habib Hashim uh, bin Yahya. So you, from that name, you know that they are, they are from Al Bit. Uh, then he was like, and he much has a what you call a kashaf. Uh, kashaf meaning like they, they have a sense lah. Right? It's, and they are from because of their of their purity of their of their um, actions and their deeds and their amal salih and everything. He went there and he was like, go. That's how he said, just go. So you went home. <laughs> so, yeah, they're very, they're very, they're very, they're, 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 they're very, if you, subhanAllah, yeah, I can, I can't even begin to describe my experience with them. The, the, the real Habib, the real Hababas, kan? if you, like when you sit, like for me, I've sat with Habib Omar bin Hafiz, Tarim. I've sat with him and spoken to him, when I was in Tarim, uh, to consult, consultation, yeah, like, 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 I don't know how the companions feel when they are with the Prophet. Really, when I was in front of Habib Omar, you know, and his, my husband was with me, lah. my husband was with me, and I was just airing some of my uh, problems, issues, lah. especially with da'wah. You know, we tend to ask him issues about da'wah and everything. And then, and he, the, 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 how humble he is there. Eh? You know, subhanAllah. And then he came in late. You know, we were waiting for him to talk to us. He came in late now. He came in, he went, he, he came in, he, he saw me at the corner. I was all in black, like, covered everything. And then he was like, Where's the husband? Where's the husband? <laughs> he, he panicked his job now. He saw me. He couldn't see my husband. And then my husband stood up. And then he, and he went right to my husband. And then he took my husband's hand and kissed his hand. Kissed my husband's hand. My mother ran right. Yeah. And they are scholars. They are high. They have memorized thousands of hadiths now. Tens of thousands of hadiths. I can vouch for that. They've memorized. Word for word. You know, on top of Quran, on top of, like the, they, they are, you know, <laughs> they don't show it. They don't show it. They don't show it. Ah, ah, mashallah, 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 mashallah. Have you ever been to Very humble human beings. You go there, you just you're flawed, lah. You're flawed by, by by how they are. We're not exaggerating. I think we are under we are under describing. <laughs> I mean, it cannot, it cannot be described. But I remember that he came and he kissed my husband's hand down. And then he was like, and then he said in Arabic, la, he's so sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm late, I'm your wait, you know, I was at your time. He was saying this now. Like, and, then, and then my husband, that time, didn't understand Arabic very well. So my husband just, uh, Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> <laughs> then he said, and then, and then, and then, and then after that, I, I asked my questions, la, you know, behind a, behind a screen, I asked my questions. And then, he answered and answered and answered. Okay, and then done. And then we all uh, excuse ourselves and we left. Like, oh, have you, you can imagine his schedule. Like, he's super busy. Super busy. Eh? <laughs> but he will make time for students who have problems. He will make time. You know, and he will apologize that he came late and he, and he, and he wasted our time. I'm like, Are you can wait for an hour. I'll wait for an hour. <laughs> and after that, I left that. And my husband was like, What did he say at first? Eh? And I said, He apologized to you for coming late. You, know? you just say, Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> And then my husband was like, Ya Allah, I didn't know he was apologizing. <laughs> Why are you telling me? <laughs> no, I sound so rude. <laughs> yes, Dara. Dara. Yeah, Dara. You can go to his, you can go there and, and it's just an experience, lah, mashallah. Me one day, I mean, I'm, I have the niyat after, after this entire COVID episode to actually go um, bring people and, and serve, lah. For me, I will, I will be teaching. When I go there, I'll be teaching in Dara and as the trusty thing and everything. So, like, mashallah, they are they're different now. Yeah. When you meet the real people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, eh, uh, because they're the real inheritors of the Prophet. Yeah. So, their the humility is one kind. <laughs> you have never experienced that kind of humility in your life. Right? And, and, and then when they, when they speak, right, it's, it's, you can see the direct link to the Prophet. So I with the, with the akhlaq, with the mannerism, the adab, and then and, and they are full of knowledge, the brim of knowledge, but they will only give what is needed for the lesson. They won't like like you know action and show off all that, <laughs> you know? right, But they won't do that. They just give what you all need it and what you need, what you need, what you need, you know, and they will give bit by bit and, and what you can handle also. So they won't give like like long, long, difficult hadith. <laughs> they give simple hadith. Act on this. Act on this. Act on this. Kida. <laughs> and, then, and people, mashallah, and this is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to make it simple for people. 
I'm making it easy for people, inshallah. Okay, like, I must continue. No, I will continue and talk about them. I will like, um, this is like my, my, <laughs> my favorite topic <laughs> to talk about my teachers, inshallah. Um, Oh, inshallah, inshallah. If I think about them only, I will just I da da <laughs> rindu. I, I miss them so much being in that in that company. I, but it is the it is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to not stay where your teachers where, where they are lah. Right? The sunnah is to leave the cave. <laughs> you go there, you learn, you come back. Uh, the sunnah is not to stay where you are. No, some people I know they they go and then they stay. Which is okay lah. You can you can go Tarim and you can stay there and you can you know just just uh, uh, cut off from Singapore, right? But um, if uh, if but for some people, they cannot because of the responsibility obligation right, of what's going on back home. You know, I had a meeting that, that a, few, a few days ago lah with some of the that uh, those who do da'wah all over the world. You know, in America, in the UK, in in, in Australia, in you know all over the world, right? And really. Uh, they, when they left Tarim like 10 or 15 years ago, they never went back. Uh, because of the, the, the demand in their country, right? just for religious education, the demand is so strong, they can't even leave for a week. You know, they, they get pulled from every, from every, every end, you know, mashallah. But that is the, the, the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The demand will be very, people are, people are dying, they're thirsty, for some form of spiritual guidance. And that, that, that is an amana, eh? mashallah. It's a responsibility, mashallah. Okay, so Nabi Yusuf, <laughs> where Nabi Yusuf eh? so Nabi Yusuf says, so he said, you know, uh, ask, you know, ask the king, first Alhu, ask the king, what's with those women, you know, who cut their hands? For surely my Lord right, knows all about their guile right, or their plotting. The king said, bring him to me. And when the messenger came to him, he, Joseph, Nabi Yusuf, alayhi salam, said, return to your Lord and ask him, what's the case of the woman who cut their hands? Oh, my Lord knows about their plots. And the word Lord here can refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It can refer to the Aziz. <laughs> the Aziz was well aware of what was going on. Eh? The Aziz knew when Nabi Yusuf is, is, um, is, is uh, innocent. Eh? But the Aziz still you know, saw that he was Jail. Nabi Yusuf was jailed. Right. Uqala al bi. Right. So the interpretation was presented to the king. The scene skipped this uh, skipped this part as can be inferred what happened. Right. And the king then commanded that Nabi Yusuf Allah be brought to him. And when he came to Nabi Yusuf, he told it was to the king's command. He very calmly said, Go back to your king and, th- and ask him about those women who cut their hands. And when the messenger came to him, Nabi Yusuf did not jump to seize his freedom as what most people would do. Right? But he was, he was calm. And this is the behavior of those who know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in full control over everything. You don't, you're not hasty about things. You don't rush into things. You don't be, you're, not, you're not afraid you might lose things. If you're on the truth and you're doing things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you take your time to do so and right, to do it correctly and properly, don't be, don't be afraid. Right, don't be worried. <laughs> Mashallah. This, this, this is one of the traits of prophets, which is basically, um, it, it means ta'anni. Right, ta'anni in Arabic language means to take steps, you know, to take calculated steps. They, you will never find a prophet or a righteous person rush into things. They will never be hasty. They will never be rash. And in fact, there's a hadith, hastiness is from shaitan. Right? To be hasty. What is hasty? Hasty does not mean to be quick. Hasty means to rush into matters without thinking. That's the definition of hasty. Right? And that's why it's from shaitan. <laughs> right? Because you know, if you rush into matters without thinking, right, more often than not, you fall flat on your face. <laughs> because you're not going to see where you're going. In the subhanallah. That's what shaitan does. And shaitan, he makes us hasty. So we do things to hurt those around us. And then when we want to pull back our words, we want to repent, we want to apologize, a lot of damage done already. Right? Shaitan wants that. He wants that damage done. Right? So that you know, it will never be the same again. There's a thing about hastiness. 
you know, the story of, of, a, of, a, of a father and a son. Maybe it was kind of, you know, um, jump tales that, that whereby you, it's a Chinese, I think it's a Chinese tale. Okay. My mother liked to ask kind of tales when we were young. <laughs> she liked to tell us the tale of the, of the woman and her mother-in-law and the tale of the... So I don't know, I remember all these tales that she would tell us. But it's all about some, like moral stories. It's moral stories. Right? So the story of the father and the son, right, whereby a son used to be hasty in his words and angry. Right? He used to fly into rage. So whenever he would fly into rage, he would begin to say things and he would hurt people right, in that way. So, and he couldn't stop himself. He, and then after, after that, he would come down and then he would apologize. And we all know of maybe ourselves or people who are like that. I right? say all kinds of things when they're angry and then, okay, like, I didn't mean it. So sorry. <laughs> damage done, a lot of damage done, you know, in the heart. You can forgive, right? but then it causes a rift already. You know, there's like a sort of crack already happened. And because of the, the words that were said, and it's very, it's very painful and hurtful. So the, the father wanted to tell, see, all stories you can tell to your, to your anak-anak, like, eh, small, small children. And he said, um, the father wanted to teach his, his son a lesson. And said to the son, every single time, you lose your temper, and you allow your temper to control you, and, your, and to control your tongue. So you say something that you, um, that you regret. Every single time that happens, Go out to the garden, take one of the um, one of the nails right, from my bucket of nails, and knock a nail into the fence. Some of you might know the story, inshallah. Knock a nail into the fence. Okay, every day do this. Right. So after the first day, the son <laughs> in one day knocked ten nails. this <laughs> boy, he's going around scolding people, never. Inshallah, knock ten nails into the fence. Then he said, oh, today I knocked 10 nails in the pen, so it's by the report. But tomorrow, try better, try better, try better. Right? I mean, try to improve. Lah. Right? So the next day, he knocked lesser nails, right? nine nails. And the following day, lesser and lesser. Because whenever he wants to lose his temper and, and, and to shout at the person or to say something that's hurtful, he will think about the nails. <laughs> I'm supposed to go lesser in number of nails, not more. And he will think about the nails that he has to knock into the fence. Right? So he will stop himself from saying anything. So then after a while, he came into a day whereby he knocked no nails. Uh, the whole day went by and there was not a single, you know, lashing out at people. So he said to his father very proudly, oh, MashaAllah, father, I, today, <laughs> today I knocked zero nails uh, into the fence, you know, I am cured. And then the father said, not yet, not yet. Now, right now. Every day whereby you don't knock a nail into the fence, you're allowed to pull one nail out from the nails you have knocked into the fence. Very tiring, eh? <laughs> right? So the father also, mashallah. <laughs> so every day right, that, you, that, you, that you succeed in going through the day without losing your temper and lashing out at people, you can pull a nail out. So the boy said, okay, you know, I will do that. So now the boy has full control eh, over his, um, his temper. Right? So the days went by, and nail after nail was pulled out until eventually the very na- last nail was pulled out. So now he's so proud of himself, inshallah. He, went, he goes to his father and he says, Oh, father, I've pulled out the very last nail uh, in the fence. So the father took him and said, Come with me. So he followed the father. The father went out to the garden, to the fence. And he said, Look at the fence. What do you see? The fence, is, the fence is full of nail marks, right? Because he knocked nails everywhere. I said, now there's so many marks on the nails. And the father said, that's what harsh words do to the heart. And it comes, it hits, right? You can say sorry all you want. You can say sorry all you want. And people can forgive you. They will remove the nail. Because they have forgiven you. But it's no longer the perfect fence you, it once was. Uh, the, the bond is no longer that perfect bond it once was. It's no longer that perfect heart, you know, that, that perfect love. It's something there that was said that can ring in people's head. Right? So even as they can, they can forgive you, but it will ring. Lah. It will just, it just be there. It's a scar. Lah, scar. It's a scar that is just there. You know, just, just there. Right? So, so, so be careful. Don't knock the nail in the first place. Uh, don't knock the nail in the first place. No, mashallah. I said, Allahumma sari ala Sayyidina Muhammad. That is basically, it's, it's a trait that we're seeing in Abu Yusuf here. It's a trait that we see with prophets. It's called ta'anni. 
that the enemy is to take calculated steps not to rush into things, right? So hastiness is from shaitan, definition of hastiness, to rush into something without thinking, to see something without thinking, meaning to allow your emotions to get the better of you. Right? So there is no thinking involved. And that's why there's a lot of regret involved, right? because you're not thinking. You know, subhanAllah, the believer, the more they learn about the religion, the more they, they clothe themselves with the, with, the, with the beauty, the beautiful clothing of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the akhlaq of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the more they do this, the more they will display of this trait of ta'anni. It's a very rare trait. Eh? You know, if someone has it, they have a lot of goodness in them because they're able to look at situation, analyze, then take steps. You know, analyze all the consequences of their actions and all the possible things they can do. There was once, one, there was once um, um, Sayyidina Miqdar, right, one of the, the companions of Rasulullah wasalam, who was not from Medina. He was from outside of Medina. He was a chief of his tribe. Right? And so when he came into Medina, right, um, he, his people, when they came into Medina, they just got off of their, their camels, disheveled and dirty and whatever, and they went right into the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to go and find the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to go and pledge allegiance to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The leader, right, he got off of his um, camel, right, he went to a nearby well, right, he cleaned himself, he put on, new, new, he put on fresh clothing, right, he perfumed himself, he beautified his hair, he, wear, he wore a new, like, a sarban, then he went to the mosque of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, presented. It's called ta'an. Because he realizes the Prophet is going to be there. <laughs> Inshallah, he's going to be there. Right? So do things, do things well. Uh, do it right, do it well. Right? So he, he did that. And when he came up to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah stood up for him you know, to, to honor the... And this is the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, it's, it's a very you know, humble way. Whereby he would, he would actually honor the, the chiefs of tribes. And he's the Prophet. So he will, he will honor the chief of the tribe and then he will sit down and the, 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 the man sat down, Mr. Baghdad, uh, he sat down, Baghdad, Mr. Baghdad, he sat down and then Rasulullah said to him, you have two traits that Allah loves. You know, this is the first thing, you have two traits that Allah loves. Forbearance, helm, wa ta'anni. Ta'anni meaning you take calculated steps. Allah loves that. And then the man said, Rasulullah, is this something that I developed or is it something that Allah gave me? Is it, is it, he's asking, is it natural? <laughs> you know, or is it something that you know, I developed? And he said, it's something Allah gave you. Uh, so some people, they, they're born with it. They have all this, you know, this, this way of always being, um, being, being in control. You know, and or helm, they just have very high forbearance. And they just analyze the situation then take a steps, you know, mashallah. But some people, like myself, like, I need to, a lot of training, a lot of training, a lot of schooling, a lot of talking to the self. <laughs> I need to control emotion, control emotion, control emotion. I said, you don't, you know, you don't, you don't do something that you will regret. Mashallah. Allah. Uh, so Nabi Yusuf, alayhi salam, he is demonstrating the traits of ta'anni. Right? Ta'anni, the trait of taking steps, calculated steps. So instead, he requests a re-evaluation of his past record. Right. There's no rush, there's no hurry. Right. The seven years of, of, um, of good harvest is going to come first, right? <laughs> so you cannot have seven years to, you know, to kind of you know, get things done, mashallah. So he's not, he's not in a hurry to leave the prison. He did not leave the prison just, because, just by the king's permission and forgiveness, yet he told him that he should go back to the king and ask the, the messenger and ask him about the woman who had been placed in the pet, who had been at the palace of the Aziz and had cut their hands. Ask about that story. And in fact, that story was well known. The pe- it wasn't a secret um, situation. Eh? The people knew the stories very well. Right? Why? Right? Because first and foremost, the people involved were all the wives of the big shots. Right? All the, all the, the, the aristocrats lah, of society. The, you know, the rich and famous were involved. And the rich and famous all had their hands. <laughs> so uh, suddenly, all of them had hurt hands after that session, you know, that, 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 that banquet that they had at the Aziz house. So the story was actually, and there were servants there. And, when, and anywhere whereby there are servants, news will spread. 
Right. So the news spread now, fine way, you know, about, about this woman who cut their hands and when they saw a handsome young man, Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam. Right. So it was, a, it was a well-known story. And it was a well-known story. Right. In society, why wouldn't it be, right? It make news, that kind of thing. Right. It will make news. So he didn't want his freedom to be the result of royal amnesty. Right. He didn't want it that it was because the king liked him. He didn't want that. Right. But he wanted to show that he was indeed innocent. It's not that he got out of prison because he got some favours with the king. I know. But it was out of, it was fairness. It was fairness. Um, Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam wanted his innocence and his chastity to be proven right, to all around. And we mentioned earlier on, for two main reasons. Right, for um, position in, in the king's ministry, for the sake of the people, eh? never for, for wealth or popularity. <laughs> they don't care about wealth or popularity. And the second one is um, for da'wah. He's looking at this for da'wah, right? so innocence and chastity to be, uh, to be proven. Probably because he held the Aziz in great respect and did not mention his wife and only mentioned the woman as a group. Right, so I mean, Nabi Yusuf said, you know, do do a do a research and do do some some investigation on the woman who cut their hands. He didn't say specifically Zulaikha. Uh, he refrained from doing so. We know Nabi Yusuf has a very high um, respect for the Aziz that bought him, right? and that you know made him to like made, to treat him like a son. And it's something we see with the prophets. They have very high respect for those who. Um, uh, that they lived under their, their, their roofs, you know, their, their houses. You find with Nabi Ibrahim and his uncle Azar, right, the one who made the idols. Right? And, and, and for me, I'll take the, I take very strongly the opinion that it was an uncle right, and not a father um, because the father's brother is also called father. So the Quran says, when Nabi Ibrahim says, Oh, my father, right, doesn't mean it's his um, you know, blood father. Uh, but it's his father by that you looked after me when I was young. Uh, so it's known that Nabi Ibrahim was an orphan. Uh, and it was indeed his uncle uh, who looked after him. His uncle was the idol worshipper. Uh, because we also believe in our aqidah that prophets cannot come from a lineage of polytheists. Uh, not possible. Eh? All prophets will come from a lineage of monotheists. So it's not possible for Nabi Ibrahim's father to be an idol worshipper. Uh, but it was his uncle. Mashallah. Which is why, mashallah, sometimes I feel like, you know, when it comes to children's books, kan, because it's something in the language, in the Arabic language. Like, even actually, in fact, in our, in our own culture, if someone were to adopt a child, I mean, not, not under Islamic law, but basically non Muslims, right? If they were to adopt a child, the child would automatically call them father, right? I mean, they would, they would be taught to say, this is mama and this is papa, right? And, and, and basically, they adopted, adopted children. Right, so, so, and the child will not differentiate. Right, it's my mother. It's my father. And even, even if, like, so if you know it's your auntie who adopted you, you still call the auntie Ummi. Right, you say Ummi, Ummi. But no, you know it's your auntie. It's not, it's not your real mother. It's your auntie. Right, but you, just still, you still say Ummi or Abba. Right? You know, subhanAllah. So, so, um, so uh, sometimes I wish that, 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 that for children's books because it affects Akida. It affects Akida. Right, so Nabi Ibrahim is talking to his uncle. And when he, when he advises Azar, he's talking to his uncle. Um, and you see Nabi Ibrahim speaks to his uncle with high respect. Because his uncle, it was under his uncle's roof that he grew up. And so they always show like the jasa, you know, the, 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 they will show how, you know, they, they are, I won't use the word indebted. Because they're prophets. You know, they only depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it's just a respect for those that they, that they had taken favours from, who had favoured them in some way. Right? So Nabi, you see Nabi Ibrahim with Azar, you find even the same thing with Nabi Musa and Fir'aun. Because Nabi Musa, don't forget, Nabi Musa grew up in the, in the palace of Fir'aun. <laughs> no, mashallah. So Nabi Musa goes to Fir'aun in a very respectful way. Right? You, know, you don't say like, like a father to a son, but almost like a father to a son. Like a son to a father. Almost like that. Right, because Fir'aun is still, is still a, 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 the worst of, of crooks, like, eh, Fir'aun. But Nabi Musa goes to him and speaks to him, understanding it's a man that he grew up under the roof of this man. 
Uh, Nabi Ibrahim also understood this is the man that he grew up under the roof of this man. And so, you know, in our time, unless we complain, eh, my mother, oh, I don't know how to advise her, I don't know how to advise my father. The prophets all got the same situation. Eh? <laughs> like, they, they, got, they got worse. Nabi Ibrahim's um, uncle would say to him, shut up, Ibrahim. I mean, shut, shut up, shut up. Would keep quiet, Ibrahim. Shut up, Ibrahim. And then he would say things in, in the Quran. Like he would say, if you, don't, if you don't keep quiet, I'm going to stone you. So you better keep quiet. The father, the, the, grand, the, the, the uncle, aggressive. Eh? <laughs> Nabi Ibrahim's uncle. Um, Fir'aun, even worse. <laughs> I mean, Nabi Musa, how Fir'aun was so rude to Nabi Musa. Then if, you go, inshallah, if we go into the story of Fir'aun, um, the entire dialogue between Nabi Musa and Fir'aun, you can see Fir'aun, he's, he's so manipulative. You know, he's, he, he's, he, he instigates, right? he's manipulative. Like he twists Nabi Musa's words here and there. Like he says things to get people to be against Nabi Musa. He says things to get people to like him and, and, and to favor him. He's, 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 you look into his, di- in his dialogue, he's so manipulative. Which shows some sort of intellect that Firaun actually had. He had some form of intellect. Right? But he used it all for his evil ends. Lah. I know, inshallah. And so we see the same thing with Nabi Yusuf. They, rem- they, they all they remember the jasa, they remember the, the goodness, you know, that they, or the, what's the goodness, but favors, and the favors they receive from these persons. I said, Nabi Yusuf, he received this goodness from the Aziz. And the Aziz, he came to the house of the Aziz, he was 12 years old, and he grew up in the house of the Aziz. Right? So he was very careful to not soil the name of the Aziz, you know, and to respect the Aziz in that way. So Nabi Yusuf and Nabi, Nabi, Nabi Ibrahim, when eventually the father got aggressive, and the, the uncle of one, the uncle got aggressive against Nabi Ibrahim I, and said, I, I, will, I will stone you. If you speak, say one more word, I will stone you. And Nabi Ibrahim says, Okay, I will dua to Allah for you. Like, I will dua to Allah for you. And he said, Salam, and he left. And basically, you know, he, you know, he, made, his, he made his stand, lah, and he said, Salam, and he left very peacefully. You won't find them at all being rude towards their parents. Right? Not parents, but guardians. You won't find them being, being rude at all to their guardians. So what more, you know, people who, in our time, who, are, who they learn the religion, then they go back home and they want to preach to their families, especially to their parents. And the most difficult people to try and preach to, eh? <laughs> you know, inshallah. They want to preach to their own parents. Um, subhanallah, whenever we ask our teachers about this question, they will always say, only ever come to your parents with the highest respect. And the highest respect and reverence for your parents. And nothing less. Nothing lesser. The moment you see them getting agitated, step back. Right? And don't keep coming at them. Let them be. And more often than not, they'll look at your akhlaq and the way you... And the way you Interact with them. It's more that than anything else in the world, inshallah. And some of our, of our teachers, you know, the Haba Ibn, they will say, to the extent they will say, don't say anything. Right? Just be good to them. Just be good to them. Right? And that will be your da'wah to them. Right? Just be good to your parents, inshallah. Okay, um, so he was, he, he held the Aziz in very high uh, esteem. In the hadith, Nabi Muhammad wasallam said, I am astonished by the patience of Yusuf, whenever the king needed his dream interpreted, or when the king needed his dream interpreted, Yusuf did not say that he would not do so such uh, unless he was freed from the prison. And when they wanted to free him, he did not come out until all the charges and accusations against him were reputed. MashaAllah. Eh? Right. So, I mean, how many of us, if you have something the king wants, say, let me free first, and <laughs> I give you the information that you want. You know, mashallah. Nabi Yusuf, nah. Nabi Yusuf uh, gave the information straight away. Right? And, then, and, then, and then when the king said, you're out, the king wants to see you. No. <laughs> you know, go and check about my records first. Right? And then come back after that. You know, mashallah. And this is basically the behavior of someone who is completely innocent and also someone who is working in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, as mentioned, you know, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has the same traits. All prof- I, I couldn't go into other prophets because they all have the same traits. 
Okay, prophets all have similar have the same traits. Okay, so even for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he was you know they, they will never show any form of like being hard up for someone. You find this in, in all prophets because they're only working for Allah subhanahu wa taala. So never hard up. They never hard up for a particular person or you know to run after people or they never like that. Because why? They know that the guidance comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They just do, they just do their work. You know, mashallah. And so for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they once came in Surah, in surah Kafirun. Right? In Surah Kafirun, um, the tafsir of Surah Kafirun, Allah, uh, um, that was an incident where they came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, you know, oh Muhammad, we have a deal for you. Right? Why not, you know, one year we worship Allah alone and the next year you worship our gods. And straight away, Rasulullah Islam, and Allah sends Surah Kafirun down, and he rejected the, 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 this, this, this deal, which makes absolutely no sense, <laughs> if you understand what is Akida. It makes absolutely no sense. If you really believe that your God is a God, can you take turns with the gods? <laughs> Does it even make sense? That means you have no belief. Lah. Correct. If you're going to pray to all of them, it actually means you don't believe in any of them. Right? If, if you like, in case he's correct, in case this is the correct God, in case this is the correct God, I put this one also. <laughs> in case this is the correct God, there's only one that's correct. No, mashallah. And so, of course, some, and he, he's, not, he's not afraid of anything at all. Just refuse them out flat. No, mashallah. Um, Allahumma salli ala sallina Muhammad. Okay, it was a state specific for Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam. Um, so here is in Rabbi Bikaidihinna Alim, my master meaning Allah or the minister. Right? So Allah is well aware because Allah knows everything. Right? And the minister is aware of the events that occurred pertaining to Yusuf's imprisonment. Right? My Rob has full knowledge of my innocence and of their cunning. Therefore, he wanted a public inquiry to prove that he was innocent, was an innocent victim of the injustice of the chiefs and nobles of the country. And who had cast him to prison in order to cover up the guilt of their own women and their own wives. Then Nabi Yusuf says, and one of the king says, It's an expression, eh? Never, impossible. Right. Ma alimna alayhi min su. الآن حس حس الحق أنا راودته عن نفسه وإنه لمن الصادقين. You know everything has come out now. Everything is exposed now. Mashallah. I didn't think that, I thought it was exposed from before. <laughs> it wasn't actually exposed from before because the ministers kept making up stories against Nabi Yusuf. Basically, he was a scapegoat lah. Keep good for his for their wives, <laughs> and the, 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 the ill behavior of their wives. He, the king, said to the woman and said, "Send for the woman and said, what happened? And when you asked an evil act of you, of Joseph, right? tell tell me what happened between you 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 woman and and Yusuf, because the story that came from the ministers was Nabi Yusuf tried to um, uh, seduce their wives. Uh, that's a story from the ministers, eh?" Because they had to save face, uh. <laughs> all save face. So the, the, the rich and those with position um, are protected. Uh, those who are poor with no position and nothing, really nothing to lose, right? they're, they're allowed to take the entire blame right, on them. Happens still today. Right? <laughs> Same thing happens today. Those who have made a lot to lose, right, they are protected. A lot in the sense of position in Manila. Right? Those who have nothing. To lose <laughs> all the fault is put on them. And what happened when you asked an evil act of Yusuf? They answered, Allah is blameless. Hasha lillah. Allah is all perfect. Allah is blameless. There is no, it's impossible. It's impossible. Uh, Yusuf, has, Yusuf has never done anything. And we know no evil of him. Then now the wife of the Aziz, of the ruler, the Aziz, uh, she said, Zuhal Zulaikha, now the truth is out. I asked of him an evil act. 
and he is awfully truthful. Like, I was the one who tried to seduce him. So finally, everything came out. Like, years after it happened. Eh? MashaAllah. So the king made his inquiries. The ladies were called. And then khatab means they were being called or invited on an important man manner. Like the word khutbah. Like khutbah means they were addressed. Right? They were addressed uh, on a serious matter. In a sense, they were called to testify. Right? They were called to properly testify to the innocence of Nabi Yusuf. Mm. The phrase, what, what was the matter with you is much more like what calamity ma khatbukunna ma khatbukunna is like it's like what do you have to say you know or like what's your excuse ma khatbukunna or like what's your story you know, what's your side of the story you know, as to what happened idra wa tunna yusufa i see like what what happened tell us tell, tell us your story of what happened between you all and, and yusuf in a uh, you woman and yusuf as to why he's in, in prison uh, so now the woman has become clean lah. No, mashallah. And what is the matter with you? What is your what is your statement? Give us a statement as to what happened. And it was unanimous, eh? Mashallah. Not a single person blamed Nabi Yusuf. Alayhi salam. All of them. And you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if Allah wants to show innocence and he wants to show guilt, he can. Just like that. He can he can expose someone's innocence, he can expose someone's guilt just like that. So no matter how much people try and frame other people, you know, Allah is above everything. <laughs> Subhanallah. And so you should never be, never be afraid. Never be afraid. The only one you should be afraid of is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? If you're trying to deceive Allah, then you're a fool. <laughs> right? If people are trying to deceive other human beings, at any moment, Allah can expose. At any moment. And in fact, if, if it's the exposure is not in this world, because exposure in this world is mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is mercy. You know, so as to stop someone from their sin. If there's the only way to stop them, they're not making their tawbah. Right? As, a, as opposed to, as compared to exposure in the hereafter. Eh? <laughs> the last thing you want is exposure in the hereafter. Right? And then they have, um, you know, everything come out on the, day of, on the day of judgment in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody can escape. You know, inshallah. This all brings, uh, you know, to our mind. If any of you know of, like, you know, if you have any experiences with court cases, experiences with fights, you know, in court, experiences with, you know, things like when it comes to inheritance, when it comes to divorces, when it comes to a lot of these issues that happen with us, you know, in our society, like, so much lies sit in court, right, by people who believe in the hereafter, who believe in Allah and the hereafter, lie after lie after lie. As if you don't, you don't know that there's going to be the, the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next world. Even these people, they admit it. Like they, 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 they don't want to keep slandering Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam. Right, so be, be warned. You know, be warned of those who go to court you know, and they lie and lie and lie and lie and lie to get things. You know, subhanallah. And even you know, when it comes to um, financial issues, money, and they get the money, haram. Right, if it's all based on lies, every cent is haram. Every cent, eh, even if the court gave it to you, is completely haram if it's based on lies. Right, if it's unfairly given. And that is from the hadith of Rasulullah wasallam, whereby he said that I am just a human being. And you all come to me with your arguments. And it could be that I rule in the favor of those who are more eloquent, of the one who's more eloquent. And, it, and if I'm wrong, that means he's lying, he's eloquent, but he's lying. If I'm wrong, then all I'm doing is giving him a part of the fire. That's all. So even if the ruling came from the Prophet himself, right, but his ruling is based on the argument, and the argument could very well be false. Right? Allah knows. So, so even if the Prophet himself who, who gave that kind of money to the liar, <laughs> right, he's a human being, how will he know? As Allah informs him, right? Then it's fire. The whole thing, nar, fire. So all the taqwa, eh? It's more taqwa, eh? Taqwa, taqwa. <laughs> Be afraid of the, of the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. It appears that the king had asked for full information about the matter before he called them in. And says he knew about it. So then he said, Rawatunna Yusufa an nafsi. The king had done some research. Already. So when the woman came into the court, 
the king straight, went, 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 went straight to the point and said, what's, the, what, what, what's your excuse, O woman, when you all seduce Yusuf? Tengok king, eh? <laughs> king went right, said, I'm showing them, I, I know about it. I, I know what happened. <laughs> I, asked, I asked around about what happened. And this is the story that I got. And, and when, people, when, the, when the king asked, none of the servants or the people who were witnesses lied about it. They told the king, all give, all give one answer as to what happened. So the king knows Kelan, this is the fact of what happened. So he, he approached the woman directly in their faces. And not giving, them, not giving them any chance to deny or lie. I was saying by showing them that he knows what they are, what, they are saying, what, 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 what uh, he's talking about. This the king did so as they, so that he would be appraised of the so that he would be appraised of circumstances before he spoke to them. When they are brought before him, his question points an accusing finger eh? straight away. Eh? <laughs> Talk about you all seduce him. I know, I know you all seduce him. So what? Like what's your excuse now? Right. And, and in fact, you know what? This is a method of preventing lies. <laughs> it's a method of preventing lies. Right? And it's something that you can, actually you can use on children. <laughs> right? To prevent lies, you ask why the wrong was done. They answer the why. <laughs> without, without thinking, to deny the wrong. <laughs> if, like, for example, eh, like, if this, for example, they, they broke a, a vase, eh? broke a vase in the house, for example. Lah. Then you came over and say, um, you go straight to the child and say, how do you break the vase? <laughs> right. so, so straight away, their mind goes into what happened. Right? If they weren't the ones who broke the vase, they will say truthfully, I didn't break it. Uh, they will be truthfully. But if you say, who broke the vase? <laughs> uh, now you open a door for lying. You've opened a door for lying. You know, mashallah. And there was a funny story that I'll come back to the class. Right, uh, my nephew, la, I was at Tarim, my nephew was with me. Now he's a big boy already. And then he was three years old. Three years old. He went to the neighbor's house. My sister told him, my sister son, la, told him, you go there, and they had a pool, la, like it's kind of like blow up pools in the house to play. Three years old, not my pool. So my sister said to him, okay, can go and play out the neighbor's sons in their pool, right, but cannot bathe there. Must bathe at home. I said very particular lah about, about her son and who bathes her son. Right? And we should be. We should be very particular about who bathes the children. Right? So it's all, all being, being careful. Because you don't know. I mean, you don't want to, you don't want to sue on the neighbor, right? but that is how people get hurt. Right? So you should always be you know, vigilant. Right? So she said, she said to him, you can go and play um, a swimming pool with the neighbor's sons, but come back home and bathe. Not bathe, shower, come back home. So, <laughs> my sister went, went off, no, she went out of the house, I was, I was, I was at home, and then um, the boy came home, so I was, I was doing my work, I was studying, and then I saw him walking, three old boy, walking, you know, in, uh, past me, like, hair comb, <laughs> you know, baju, changed clothing, dried, and everything, now. I looked at him, and I was like, Halil, where do you bathe? So I asked the wrong question, <laughs> where do you bathe? Here at home. Like, what's up? Lying. Bathe at home. And then he said, Yeah. How hard did you get the baju? Baju is high up there. And he says, Can reach. And they reach and then come down. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> as as a lot, adults, we know straight away they're doing the same thing. Because he bathed at the neighbor's house. Confirm. Confirm. Kiss bathed at the neighbor's house. Right. So, okay, I just get quiet. I didn't say anything. I didn't pursue the matter. Lah. Because I, I don't know how to approach children and say, you know, you're lying. Uh, for me, I don't do that. I, but, but I make them expose themselves, <laughs> if, if it's possible. Uh. So I kept quiet. I know, but I, I know he, he be the neighbor's house. So my sister came back. And I said to my sister, uh, Halil came home all dried and hair combed. And <laughs> you, know, you know, all, all the set. Lah, eh, budak ni, eh. So I said, confirm with me, so. Right, confirm. Because fun. Bathe with, bathe with the abang-abang in the toilet. It's fun, kan? Or shower together. So. But it's dangerous lah, in a sense. Lah, eh? you, you never know what can happen. Because they're all older boys. Kan? So, so, so my sister just went to him and said, you know, how do you use what shampoo? Uh, this is a straight-up question. How do you use what shampoo? And she said, the green one. You don't have to green shampoo. What green one? Terus muka pucat. Straight away, he's just... <laughs> like he, you know, he knew he got exposed. <laughs> so this is the kind of question you ask. You ask the correct question, 
especially if you know that they, 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 there's a possibility of them lying. So you ask, he went straight. What's your excuse for seducing Yusuf? Uh, if they had not seduced him, the response would be, but we didn't. And that would be the response. Right? But because, you know, mashallah, right, they had seduced him. <laughs> so the response would be, the response to, you know, their excuse. And they say, he, he's, he's innocent and we are to be blamed. And they have, they have no excuse, like, basically. It's our ways of, of smoking people out <laughs> of, their, of their lying, inshallah. I see my sister used to do this so many times on, on her, on my nephew. Like. So many times I will see her um, phrase a question in a way, I think she might have learned some, from somewhere, phrase it in a way whereby the answer will expose if they are lying or, or telling the truth. The answer to the question. <laughs> no, inshallah. Um, okay, now I'm, Okay, so their dormant uh, conscious, uh, conscience were aroused, and all of a sudden, right, they say, قُلْنَا حَاشَ لِلَّهِ مَا عَلِمْنَا عَلَيْهِ مِنْ سُوءٍ Because of the question. And so the unanimously declared that Nabi Yusuf was, was innocent, and they testified to his certainty and flawless personality. Right? And then the Aziz wife at that point, because now everybody has, 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 has admitted to it, and she's amongst them, and she felt so strongly that it was talk, they were talking to, to her. Because <laughs> she was you know, the one who first locked all the doors and then tried to... She went, went forward with the seduction of Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam. Right? So she admitted and tried to seduce, that she tried to seduce him because she was forefront in getting him jailed. Remember the story? And she said, if he does not do as I tell him to do, he will be jailed. Uh, she threatens Nabi Yusuf because she was, in a sense, obsessed in Nabi Yusuf. Nabi Yusuf goes, ah, then in that case, I'll be jailed. <laughs> and like, jail is, is, is more beloved to me than anything else. Right? And then um, there's a full testimony to his innocence and his having always said the truth. The woman, right, the, the woman does not mind what happens to her as a result of her confession. Right? So, وَإِنَّهُ لَمِنَ الصَّادِقِينَ right? she, she emphasized, he is truthful. I am the one at fault. And in fact, sometimes, given many years in between, right, you know, people's guilt come about. And they grow older and they will admit right, to, their, uh, to their mistakes. Eh? Because many years have passed. And so now they can, they can kind of speak about it. You know, um, okay, um, okay, so I will stop there for today, inshallah. And the next part, you know, uh, uh, Nabi Yusuf speaks you know, about his, uh, uh, about his um, Aziz. Right, so again, and, uh, that, because to show that Nabi Yusuf is not a traitor and How do you be in government positions If you are a traitor You can't be a traitor and So this is the one, the one slander Against Nabi Yusuf that he betrayed If you can betray your Aziz, the master in the house You can betray the country and, uh, inshallah, So he had to clear his name inshallah. So uh, the story of Nabi Yusuf There are many questions There are many answers to those who ask questions About society, about human life about you know human experience on this earth, it's, it's all about life. Eh? Nabi Yusuf, sorry, hardly anywhere you will find a mu'ajiza. Towards the end, you find a mu'ajiza about his his shirt, you know, being thrown on the, on the face of his father, and then he be, he became seeing again. But other than that, is is like normal situations. <laughs> you know, mashallah, no miracles to be spoken about. Mashallah. Okay, now we will stop there for today. Wassalamu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin, Al Fatiha, and Allah is going to be a man of the Lord. And the Lala and Huda, we serve the Hippo, and the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We will be able to do it. 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 We will be able to do it.